All right, so you guys ready to get started? Tools that we need to get started obviously is your reference photo. I printed my note in black and white and I increased the contrast just a little bit so that the shadows stand and the highlights pop a little bit more. Um, if you cannot print it or if you cannot edit the photo on your Word document to be black and white, there is usually a preset when you're ready to print your uh, image that allows you to print in black and white. Or uh, as a last resort, you can print your image in color and then scan it or photocopy it to get a black and white version. I like working with black and white. Just as a beginner um, illustrator, you don't want to be uh, sidetracked by colors and other things. We're just focusing again on hues and picking up highlights, midtones, and shadows at this point. So working from black and white might be a little bit easier, but of course, if you have to work with a colored photo because that's all you have, that's okay too. <clears throat> Okay, so what we need for this assignment is again a white sheet of paper. You can work with anything that is matte and fairly smooth because again we're just using HB pencil here, a dry medium. Um, whether you're using a fancy drawing pencil or an HB pencil, please make sure that it's a pencil that can be sharpened. You do not want to be illustrating with a mechanical pencil. You do need an eraser. Sometimes the eraser on the tip of the pencil does not cut it. We'll be doing a lot of drawing and erasing with this project. So investing in a separate eraser is always good. And if you have a blending stomp and you do enjoy blending and smudging, this is a tool that you need. Um, I did let my students know that if they do not, if they are virtual learners and they don't have a stomp available, they can either create their own, watching a reference video on creating a stomp, of course, just using regular paper, or you can get away with using a Q-tip. However, Q-tips, when they smudge, um, tend to absorb a lot of the pencil and they don't like to release that pencil back on the paper. A stomp will collect a lot of lead. However, when you rub it back on a sheet of paper, it will still release some of that pencil, which is what you want. Um, so the downside to using the Q-tip is just, it's going to be a little too light. You may have to go over some areas over and over and over again. So if you don't have a stop to work with, I would maybe recommend even just doing hatching or cross hatching for this project. Okay, but things that you need are basically those. Um, we do need a sharpener to periodically make sure that our pencil is sharp, not too sharp, but sharp. And you will need a highlighter at some point in this uh, assignment as well. If you don't have a highlighter, a brightly colored pencil crayon works as well. Okay, <laughs> so step one. We want to grid, uh, create a center grid over top of our uh, portrait that we've printed out, a reference photo. And we want to transfer the face onto our drawing sheet of paper in the exact same spot. So we've centered our face really nicely on our um, computer programs. We've made sure that the eyes are quarter way down. Um, we, we know that we have an appropriate amount of neck, collarbone, shoulders, a little bit of hair accessories enclosed and we want to make sure that when we transfer this image we're not transferring it and shifting it in any way and the way to do that to transfer something and make sure that it lands exactly in the same spot in this new layout is to use a center grid so the first step to using a center grid is finding the exact center of the image and we do that by finding the center going across the top going across the bottom and going across the sides obviously this measurement and this measurement will be exactly the same as will these two, okay? So let's start with this one here. I like to use a, uh, oh, and then the last thing that you'll need for this assignment obviously is a ruler. I like to buy rulers at dollar stores. Um, sometimes they're tinted. This one is tinted pink. I like to use a colored one on a video just so that you guys can better see it. It could be an absolutely clear translucent ruler that doesn't have a color to it. Regardless, I like the clear ones just because when you're doing illustrations, plus you're measuring and making lines on top of illustrations, you can still see what you're covering up. And sometimes you need to know what the ruler is covering up and what it's not, okay? In this case, we're just using it as a measuring tool, okay? The other thing to note is that whenever you're using a ruler, this might sound very basic, but I find that a lot of students mess up, um, is by realizing that you always start at the zero mark, not at the tip of the ruler, okay? So the start of the ruler is not necessarily the beginning of your measurement. It's where you see that first line that counts as zero, okay? 
So we're going to put our zero at the start of the paper. We're not measuring the photo printout. We're literally measuring the paper. <coughs> I apologize about the coughing. I have a very dry throat from talking um, and recording videos all day. But I do have um, I do have the ability to get through this a couple more. So let's do this. Okay. So we're going from zero to about 21 and a half. If we were to divide this by two, you would get about seven, or sorry, 10.75. You could round it for the sake of this project, making your life a little bit easier. We could do 10.5, or you can be um, right, very correct and do 10.75 in case, in which case you're going to be marking between 10.5 and 11, okay? But again, for the sake of the odd grade nine or 10 student doing this, we're just going to do 10 and a half. We'll round to 10 and a half. Okay, because we've rounded, we don't want to turn this paper now. We want to make sure that the bottom has the exact same measurement in the exact same spot. So rather than turning the picture around, I'm just going to slide the ruler right down, right down here. <coughs> and then beginning at zero, I'm going to measure again to 10.5, the exact same measurement. Okay, so that's going to be your middle vertically. And now I'll turn the paper lengthwise. And again, we're going to measure the length of the paper, not the length of the photo. Going from zero to, what do we have here? Okay, exactly 28 centimeters. So we, we divide that in half, we'll get 14 exactly. And then we're going to slide the ruler to the other side of the image. And again, Make sure that zero is at the beginning and mark 14 again. Okay, so these are our center points going around the image. It's extremely important that we know where these are for a later step. So we'll take a um, highlighter, or if you don't have a highlighter again, a yellow or orange or brightly colored pencil crayon works. And you want to mark those little center points that we've created. Like I said, we'll have to reference them later, so we don't want to forget where they are once we start putting more pencil work on top of this reference. Okay, at this point, we can connect those reference points. So line them up neatly, make sure that you're holding down your ruler and that it's not shifting anywhere, and you're just going to take your pencil and make a nice, dark, straight mark. You can go nice and dark over the reference photo. Again, you want to see these lines. On our good copy, we'll be far more gentle with our pencil work so that we can go back and erase. However, these lines we won't be erasing, so you can go nice and dark. Okay, and now we are at the point um, I was with this one here. We've got our center points and we've created a center cross. Okay, in the next video, what I'll show you how to do is how to grid the four quadrants that we've created here, and then we will be transferring that onto another sheet of paper.